All right, guys, gonna help you out with this practice test here since I'm kind of laying out today. Okay, so the first one, find the vertices and foci of the ellipse. Remember, we want the right hand side to A is equal one, so we're gonna divide everything up there by 64 and cancel. So, like 16 goes into 64 um, four times, four goes into 64 16 times, that equals one. The vertices are on the major axis, as always, and that fits in the ellipse. The, the major is a bigger one, which is 16, so it's gonna be on the Y. So I'm going to put 0 plus or minus 4. The foci, foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So I would do 16 minus 4. That's 12. I'm having a hard time there. The square root of 12 is plus or minus um, 2 on 3. Just breaking down the 12 there. And they also go on the major axis. So I'm going 0 and 2 plus or minus square root of 3. And that's number 1. Number 2, going backwards here. Find the equation of the ellipse with these vertices and those foci. Okay, so first of all, because the vertices, well, first of all, with an ellipse, it's always x squared over something plus y squared over something equals 1. All right, and the major is the bigger one. This time it says the major, the vertices are on the x, on the y, because it says 0, negative 6, and 0, 6. Those are on the y axis. If I square to 6, I get 36 right there. Now, to find what goes under the x, remember, you got to use what they give you. They gave you foci, you got to use the foci. So I'm doing c squared. C is 4, by the way. So C squared is 16 equals A squared minus B squared. So 16 minus B, 36 minus B squared, which means B squared must be 20. So you put the 20 underneath the X squared because that's what goes in the equation is actually the B squared. Okay, number three. Uh, they're going to move it around a little bit. This time it says find the center, vertices, and foci of that ellipse. The center is the opposite of what's in your parentheses, negative 3 and 5. The vertices are on the major axis. Now, be careful here. The major is the y because it's the bigger one. So that means I'm going to add 6 because it's 36 and subtract 6 from the major, which is the 5, by the way. So if I add 6 to the 5, it's 11. If I subtract 6 from the 5, it's negative 1. Now, you could also draw the picture, draw the graph, and, and, give, and figure it out that way just by counting. That also works. I just don't have quite enough room on here or the time on the video. So also I'm going to find the foci. Foci is c squared equals a squared minus b squared, which is going to be 11. So c is going to be plus or minus square root of 11. And again, that goes on the major, which is the y. So you add it to the y part of your center, not your vertex, but your center. So if I do that, I get negative 3 and 5 plus or minus square root of 11. And guys, that's it. That's, that's all three answers. Now, notice my minor axis, which was the x. The number never changed. Negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. It stayed the same all the way through and always will. Okay, then when you get to 4, we're doing exact three type of problems again, except now we have a hyperbola instead of an ellipse. So the first one, again, dividing everything by 16 to make it 1 over there. I'm getting x squared over 16 minus y squared over 4 equals 1. Now, remember with the hyperbola, the major axis is not the one that is bigger necessarily is the one that comes first, which means it's the x-axis. So the center here is going to be 0, 0 because there's no parentheses in my numerators. The vertices are on the major axis. I'm looking at the x. There's a 16, so I'm going to go plus or minus 4 and 0. The foci, um, now I do c squared is a squared plus b squared. So I do 16 plus 4, which is 20. And if I take the square root of 20, 20 is really 4 times 5, so the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 5, so that also goes on the major. And all I'm going to ask you for for the asymptotes is what the slope is. What's the slope of the asymptote? All right, so um, the way we do that, remember, you could draw, the, again, you could draw your box, and you could do rise over run that way. Or remember, the y-axis is what rises, and the x-axis is what runs. So I'm looking underneath my y, and there's a 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'm going to be plus or minus 2. There's a 16 under your x, the square root is 4. So if you reduce that, you get plus or minus 1 half. All right. Number 5, going backwards now, just like we did with the ellipses a minute ago. Um, look at what they gave me here. They gave me vertices. Look what the vertices are. They're on the y, which means the y comes first. All right. They're 3. Went 3 up and 3 down. That means there's a 9 there. I have a minus x squared over something. It equals 1. Again, they gave you foci. You use the foci. All right, so now we're doing c squared, which is 25, because it's a focus 5, is a squared plus b squared. So 9 plus what is 25? Um, 16, and there's your answer. All right, number 6, the last one of these. Number 6, find the center. This time they just move the center around like they did up there on number 
3 or whatever. So the center of this time is 5 and negative 2, the opposite of what's in your parentheses. The vertices are on the major, which is what comes first, which is the x. So because it has a 16, I'm going to add 4 and subtract 4 to my y. Uh, sorry, to my, I I said y, to my x coordinate. I sat there and drew an arrow right at my x coordinate. So 5 plus 4 is 9, negative 2. 5 minus 4 is 1, negative 2. There's your vertices. And then let's go ahead and do the slope. The slope of the asymptotes is the square root of what's under the y, which is 3, plus or minus, by the way, over the square root of what's under the x, which is a 4. So there's your slope. Last thing we need is foci. So I'm going c squared is a squared plus b squared. 16 plus 9 is 25. And if you take the square root of 25, you get plus or minus 5. And again, you add that to your major part of the center. So I'm going to add that to the 5. Okay, so if I do 5 plus 5, that's 10, negative 2. The other one's going to be 5 minus 5, which is 0, negative 2. And those are your two foci. Hope that's good. All right, let's, I'm going to erase that stuff. I'm going to see if I can fit this in here. Okay, number seven. Now, you got to decide here whether you want to use elimination or substitution, or which one can you use. One thing I'm noticing about this one, you really have, you, you can go either way here. I'm going to go with um, um, elimination just because I like it better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the signs of every, basically multiplying the whole second equation by negative one. And what's going to happen is if I'm going to add these together, I'm going to bring down the x squareds, the y squareds cancel, and on the other side I got a negative x, and then 25 minus 5 is 20. All right, because I have an x squared, I'm going to try to factor, so I'm moving everything over. I'm moving the x over, make it plus x, move the 20 over, make it minus 20, and I'm going to factor. When I factor, I get x plus 5, x minus 4, um, so my x answers would be negative 5 and 4. Now to find the y answers, I'm going to plug them back in right here. So if I plug in negative 5, I would get y squared equals zero, which means y, I take the square root, y is gonna be zero. So one answer is gonna be negative five, zero. If I take the four and plug it in, I'm gonna get y squared equals four plus five, which is nine. If I take the square root of nine, I get plus or minus three. So that's a plus or minus. So if I plug in the four, I get two y's, I get positive or negative three, and there you go. There's the answer to number seven. Number eight. Oh man, this one's set up perfect for elimination. I mean, look at that. I'm just gonna draw the line here, add them up. I get two x squared over here. The y squareds are gone. I get 18. Let's divide both sides by two. Take the square root. Here my x is a positive three and a negative three. So I'm gonna plug in a positive three first. If I plug it in, I'm gonna plug it in the top. If I plug three in up there, that gives me nine plus y squared equals nine. Um, that's gotta be zero. Think about it. And secondly, if I plug in a negative three, if I plug in the same spot, it also gives me a positive nine, which means it's zero also. So there's your two answers for eight. And if you wanted to, you could write that like plus or minus three, zero, if that helps you any. Number nine, uh, gosh, number nine, no choice here. You have to do substitution. And because it says this, this is gonna look weird when I do this probably. Let me see what I wanna do. Yeah, because it says x is y, but because it says y is x squared, I'm gonna take an x squared and put it right there where the y is. So I'm gonna get x equals x squared squared. I just substituted the x squared where the y was. So I get x equals x to the fourth, which is kind of crazy. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the x on this side over there. So I get x to the fourth minus x. Now I'm gonna factor, I'm gonna take out the GCF, which is X. That leaves X cubed minus one, which is awesome. That's a cube, by the way. So I'm gonna go small, big. You're, you're thinking, oh no. Cube root, cube root, square, multiply, change the sign, square. And what it gives me is it gives me two answers. It gives me zero right here and one. This one is gonna be imaginary answers. We're not going imaginary, we're going real answers only. So I'm gonna take a zero. Those are my x's. I'm gonna put, plug a zero in and plug a one in um, right here. So if I plug zero in and square it, y is zero. I'm gonna take the one and plug it in right there. One squared is one, so y is, has to be one. So those are my two answers, zero, zero, and one, one. Those are the only things that will work in there. All right, one more of these, I think. Yep, number 10. Number 10, again, obviously has to be substitution. You can't eliminate there anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say take the second equation and say y equals 2 over x. And I'm going to substitute that in up here. So I'm going to get x squared plus 2 over x squared equals 5. It's going to be a doozy. Hang in here. 
So that gives me x squared. If I square that 2 over x, I get 4 over x squared equals 5. Now, we've done equations like this before, and we don't like them when they have um, fractions in them. So I'm going to multiply everything up there by x squared, because that's going to get rid of the fraction in that second term. So if I do x squared times x squared, next to the fourth, second term that cancels is just 4. Third term is 5x squared. Now, I'm going to have to factor this big thing, so I'm going to move the 5x squared over here. It gives me x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 equals 0. I'm going to factor. So I'm trying to think of factors of 4 that would give me negative 5. And because it's going to be minus 4 and minus 1 because if you multiply those two, you get positive 4. If you add them, you get negative 5. The difference here is I got to do x squared because that was x to the fourth. I can't just put x minus 4 and x minus 1. It's got to be x squared minus 4 x squared minus 1. And that gives me a difference of squares. So you can like keep on going. I know what you're thinking right now. You're probably thinking, star, not yet. x plus 2, x minus 2, x squared minus 1. You can go x plus 1, x minus 1. My 1 did not show up the first time. So here's my, my answers. My x's are negative 2, positive 2, negative 1, positive 1. And I'm going to plug them, look at this, right up here. All right, so if I plug in a negative 2 for the x right there, I get negative 1 for y. If I plug in a positive 2 for that x, I get positive 1. If I plug in negative 1 for that x, I get negative 2. And if I plug in positive 1 for that x, I get positive 2. There's your answers. Not as hard as it looks. You may want to start, but I don't know. I don't think you should. I think you should just work it out. Okay, solve. Now we're back to old stuff. If you see one log, if you always see is one log, you do the dun dun dun. You do three to that power equals that. Three to the third power is 27, and that's going to equal four plus two x. Just move the four over there, which gives you 23. Divide by two, you get 23 over two, and you got it. All right. That's all. Yeah. There's two. That one. Number 12. Augmented matrices means you're using your calculator, and we're going, finding this button right here, we're finding R ref. So go to matrix on your calculator, punch it in, go back to matrix, find your R ref, and I'm going to pause this. You won't know I'm pausing it, but I'm going to pause it, go punch it in, be right back with the answer. And the answer I'm getting is negative 1, 2, negative 2. That gives you something to check. Just a quick steps. So I'm just going to say the steps real quick. I can't show you in this kind of video. My calculator, but I can at least take the steps. It goes like this. You go second matrix, edit, three by four, punching your numbers, one, two, negative three, punching all those numbers, no variables. After you get them punched in, make sure you go second quit. Then go back to second matrix, go to math on the top. So scroll up, I would, to RF, and then hit RF. Your screen comes up and says RF what? You go back to matrix one more time, second matrix, click on the first one, matrix A. It pops back up, you hit enter, and you should see this in your last column. Please write your answer like this. You don't need to write a matrix for your answer. 13, describe an end behavior for this one. First of all, remember even, odd, even, odd, that's even because it's 12, and there's a negative in the front. Even, the ends go the same direction, so it's going to go down to the left and down to the right. That's all you got to do on that one. 14, to solve an inequality like this with a rational inequality, you got to make a low number line. You already have zero over there, so we're good. The two numbers you need on your number line are what makes the numerator zero, which is zero, and what makes the denominator zero, which is negative one. And you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna plug in 100, all right? So if I plug in 100, the top would be 500, the bottom would be 101. That's positive, which means that's negative, and that's positive. We are looking for greater than zero, which is positive. It's positive from negative infinity to negative 1. And also, oh, that should be a bracket right there. I, saw, I see that equal sign now. And also, from 0 to infinity, it should be positive. Brackets around your number because of the equals. Still, uh, parentheses around your infinity. Number 15, that should say 2 minus 7 I squared. I think the square went away on my copy for some reason. So it's square, multiply, double square. Square the 4. Multiply these together, you get negative 14i. Double it, you get negative 28i. Square it. Now, here's the deal. If you square negative 7i, you get positive 49i squared. But the i squared is going to make that positive 49 become negative 49, which I'm going to combine with the 4. 4 minus 49 is negative 45 minus 28i. Make sure you're good with that. You need to get that one. That's not that bad, but people miss that one all the time. All right, 16 is the last one. Um, it says graph this one. It's exponential growth because this number is bigger than 1. 
you have the asymptote on the x-axis. You always go one, you know, one above for your first point. The second point, you got two methods. You got my way, or you got you know who, Mr. Liam's way. So my way is you go one to the right. And you just plug in a one right there for x. Four to the first power is four. I'm going right there. Liam would tell you he's just gonna look at that number and it's four, so he's going to four above the asymptote. But either way, get that second point and just see both points, and there's your graph. Looks just like that. Hope that helps. I'll be at school early tomorrow. If you need to come in for help or during lunch or any other time you want to come in, ask any questions you want to because I want you to do well. It's your last test, except for your final. So um, do good on it. See you tomorrow.